Hey everyone. So I was going through my examples a couple of days ago and I realized that never did a sentiment analysis sample here. And in fact, if, if you go to the ML.net main page here and the example they give is actually a sentiment analysis sample, uh, but it's pretty simple. Uh, so we're going to do something a little bit different. And in fact, the data we're going to use here is on Kaggle and it is stock market sentiment data and it's just sentiment based on stock tweets. So if you look at the data here, we have the text of the tweet, then the sentiment. And so if positive is one, if it's negative, it's negative one. So that's kind of a different data representation than we're used to. And we, we need to handle that within our pipeline. And so we'll go ahead and do that. We're in Visual Studio here, got a .NET Core console application. Let's go ahead and install ml.net. I'm going to use version 1.5.1. Right, so we have that installed. And let's copy over our data here. So start data CSV. We'll make sure it copies over when we build it. So first thing is first, we need to create our context here. New ML context. And then we need to get our data. Context data. Load from text file. And we need to create a sentiment data class. First, we'll finish loading in our data here. So stock data.csv and has header is true. And then separator character is a comma. So let's create a sentiment data class. And as we saw, it has two properties. First is a string of text and then a float of sentiment and we need to add in our load column attributes load column zero and load column one notice i'm not going to use that column name attribute here to name this as the label because we have some other stuff to do in our pipeline and speaking of our pipeline let's build that up and remember our data here our sentiment is a pretty different data representation than we're used to i want this to be boolean true for positive, false for negative. And probably a couple of things you can do here. You can do a custom transform, or you probably even do the convert type transform. But what I'm going to do here is an expression transform. And I have a whole video on expression transforms if you want to get more familiar with that. But the first parameter here is the output column name. This is where I'm going to say, this is my label. And the next one is our expression. And it's a string. It's going to take one parameter and we'll map it where it's going to be that sentiment parameter, right? So if that equals one, I'm going to say true. But if it's not, I'll just say false. And that next parameter is what input column I want to use. So it's going to be the sentiment column. So basically it transforms the one for positive to true and then negative one to false. So it's going to be that Boolean that we expect that to be. Next, we're going to append on another transform to featureize the text. And we call it features as the output column. And I'm just going to use the name of expression here, sentiment data dot text. So it's going to take that text data and then featureize that for us. And then last, I'll append on the binary classification trainer here and I'll just do the SDCA logistic regression and because we have our label and features columns already defined we'll just keep the defaults for that. I can create our model so pipeline.fit on our data and next we do a prediction engine using context model create prediction engine. We already have our sentiment data input schema, but we also need to create a sentiment prediction output schema and pass in our model with it. Let's create this output schema here. So this is going to have a boolean of prediction. It's going to have a float of the probability and then a float of score. And then I'm going to give the Prediction the column 
name of predicted label. I could rename this a sentiment if I want, but I'll just leave it as prediction. All right, so there's that. Now we can test it out with some predictions here. So create a prediction, prediction engine that predicts. So new sentiment data. And let's give us some text here. Now remember our data that we trained on is our stock tweet data. For our predictions, we need to kind of stick within that, that stock domain. If we give it a text of like a movie review or something, it won't predict as well. So the first one, uh, say I would buy Microsoft shares. I'm using ticker symbols here. If you look at the data, a lot of the text in there used ticker symbols. So I'll continue with that. So next let's write out use a right line. So prediction is going to be prediction, that prediction. And let's add with probability prediction that probability. So we get the sentiment, whether it's true or false. And then we also get the probability with it. And let's actually do another one here. Prediction two, prediction engine, new sentiment data text is going to be. So the first one sounded positive. So that should get predicted positive. The second one, let's do something that should be negative here. So maybe Twitter may close at a low today. And then I'll just copy this right line here. So let's run this and make sure those predictions come out like we expect. And so we run this and we get this asynchronous operation has not completed. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Uh, there was a change I did that got into 1.5.1 that causes this. It has been fixed now. So what we can do is go back to our NuGet here. And there is a ML.NET nightly NuGet source that you can do and do include pre-release. So we get like the latest and greatest from the GitHub here. So we do that. And now we run this again. Right, so that ran and the first one predicted, predicted true. So that has a positive sentiment, has a probability of 68%. The second one predicted false, negative sentiment that had a probability of 41%. Now you may be able to tell here that anything over 50% has a predicted as a true sentiment. Anything under 50% is a false sentiment. Because we have that probability, we can be a bit more granular here. So what we can do is we can do a switch statement and we can switch on the probability. Uh, but first, let me create another prediction here. I'll say Tesla is at an all time high. So that should be pretty positive. And I'm gonna switch on that prediction probability. And I'll go ahead and put a break for my default. So the first case here, we're going to do a little bit of pattern matching here. First one is case float P when P is less than 0.5 to so less than 50%. I'll write out Tesla sentiment is negative with probability of P and then break on that. Next we do another case float P when P is greater than or equal to 50% and is less than or equal to 70%. So between 50 and 70% inclusive, we'll do another write out. So it is neutral. And one final one, float P when P is greater than 70%. So greater than 70%, I'm gonna say is positive. All right, so we can run this and see what that shows us. All right, so Tesla's at all time high is positive with probability of 76. And so let's do something else. Let's say Tesla is overpriced and see what that shows us. And that says Tesla sentiment is negative with the 38% probability. So using that probability, you can be a little more granular than just 50%. All right, I'll end things there. That's a little bit of an example of using sentiment data to make a sentiment analysis model with ML.net. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.